10 Reasons Why You Shouldn't Become a Programmer Become a Data Scientist Instead If you're looking to become a full-time data scientist and AI expert from scratch, then you are in the right place. Today, I'm about to reveal the various problems you'll face if you become a programmer. I'll also discuss how you can sidestep all these problems by becoming a data scientist instead. I understand the most common problems that programmers face every day. An excess of screen time, extra chair time, and importantly, fewer interactions with people. Each one of these problems can be very difficult. But don't worry, because today, I'm going to share with you a practical solution to end these problems permanently. I'll discuss 10 reasons why you shouldn't become a programmer, but become a data scientist instead. Reason number one, declining demand for programmers versus huge job opportunities for data scientists. Let's take a quick look at this table from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics website. The data on the job outlook for programmers during the 2019 to 29 period clearly suggests that there will be a negative 9% decline in demand. This decline is indicated by the blue arrow in the figure. In the current scenario of declining demand, becoming a programmer is not a wise move. And the ground reality is employers are simply not willing to take a chance with novice programmers. So just to get hired as a programmer, you need to be exceptionally good. While there's no similar data on the job outlook for data scientists during the corresponding period 2019 to 29, one thing is certain. There's a steady growth in the demand for data scientists. The number of unfiled job positions for this role worldwide is growing day by day. And the main reason for this is that there are not enough people who have the required skills. Therefore, while it's the worst time for you to become a programmer, it is, without a doubt, the best time for you to become a data scientist. The acute scarcity of talent supply in the field of data scientists makes it the perfect time for you to enter this profession. And the huge job opportunities for data scientists present you with guaranteed employment upon the completion of the requisite skills program. Reason number two. Compared to data scientists, programmers need to learn a lot more new languages. And these new languages get outdated fast, too. While the basic programming languages are relatively stable, the higher level languages change fast and they get replaced. Overall, programming languages are evolving fast these days. Sadly, these languages are becoming obsolete fast too. But you may wonder, how does all this affect programmers? Let me explain. Each time a language becomes outdated, a programmer is forced to learn the next new language. Why? Imagine a programmer needs to create a product or an app from scratch. It's vital that they create it using the most recent tools and methodology. Only then is it easier for users to learn and make adjustments. In the age of tablets and smart devices, this factor is especially important. Every app needs to perform at its absolute best for customers to continue using the app. So if the programmer is creating an app for iOS, a mobile operating system, they have different options. But it would be better if they used Swift, an advanced programming language. The programmer simply cannot use a language out of the dated C family. The point is, whether you are new to programming or you are a seasoned veteran, you need to be aware of the languages and technologies that are in demand. Also, you need to know about the ones that are on the way out. Now, you ask the next question. But don't data scientists need to learn programming languages too? Yes, of course. Data scientists need to learn programming languages just like programmers do. But most data scientists use just two languages frequently. These two languages are Python, released in 1991, and R, released in 1993. These two languages have been pretty stable and there is no danger of either one of them becoming outdated anytime soon. The key point is, as a data scientist, you are not forced to learn new languages often. The other thing is, the languages you do learn are relatively stable, and compared to a programmer, you continue applying your knowledge over a longer time frame. Reason number three, the long work hours play havoc with your personal time. A programmer's life is tough. The long hours put a severe strain on your social life, you work with teams of ultra-competitive people, and oftentimes, this can result in unrealistic deadlines. Difficult tasks are the norm, and the big projects become due without sufficient advance warning. Now, let's look at the other side of the coin. As a data scientist, you work in a relatively smaller team. The reason is most firms still have very small teams of data scientists. They may have a large team of programmers, but it's not the case with data scientists. As a data scientist, you will need to complete challenging tasks, though. But in a smaller team, you get more opportunities to be creative and come up with unique solutions. You may not be bothered by a big project becoming due all of a sudden. 
As a data scientist, you work at a slower pace than a programmer needs to, and the chair time isn't as long. As a result, your stress levels are lower than a programmer's, and your personal time is safeguarded. Unlike a programmer, there's hardly any toll on your social life. The reason is you don't need to work Monday through Sunday for several weeks as programmers do. And unlike a programmer, you don't need to take your work home every single day. You may need to do that once in a while, but there's no real pressure for you to do that. If personal time is important to you, becoming a programmer isn't a wise move. You're assured of more high-quality personal time if you become a data scientist instead. Reason number four, too many people want to become programmers. While the demand for programmers, at least in the U.S., is slowing down, at the same time, more and more young people are aspiring to become programmers. So, if you want to become a programmer, you can be certain that the competition for job openings as you enter the workforce is going to be high. Now, consider the universe of data scientists. The current shortage of data scientists is one factor that will work in your favor. The other favorable factor is not many professionals from other fields are becoming data scientists in huge numbers. It's true that in the data science field, finance and accounting people are in great demand. The reasons are multifold. Employers want to identify key data trends, research data, extract meaningful data, etc. But the most qualified people in these fields are simply not adept in this kind of work. So, unlike the high competition in the programmer landscape, you can safely expect the opposite in the data science landscape. Reason number five. The job role of a programmer is mostly uninteresting and repetitive, whereas the job role of a data scientist is interesting and diverse. In most domains, examples like healthcare, legal, and education, your experience directly affects your compensation and status. But in the programming field, this is not always the case. It's so easy for you to end up doing the same things even after six or eight years. Don't look at people who are retiring today as senior programmers. You may never get the same chance. The best programmers today, I mean the ones who have nothing to fear, are experts in their own right. They not only have the skills or qualifications in a non-computer science field, be it law, medicine, finance, etc., but they also have skills in computer science to make it better. A lot of these programmers may venture into business, and some of them move up to management roles too. But for the average programmer, the profession is very hazardous. This profession makes entry-level freshmen very usable. And the sad thing is, programmers with years of experience are expendable. So, the acquisition of new skills can seem less alluring. As a data scientist, however, you'll not be doing the same things even after one or two years in the industry. You're essentially a jack or jill of all trades in matters related to data science. Your responsibilities include designing and implementing processes that are used for research, data mining, and modeling purposes. After a few years of working as a data scientist, you'll have the requisite skills to mentor junior team members. Yes, that's right. You'll be providing guidance to data analysts, data statisticians, and data engineers. So, while having more experience as a programmer may not always pay off, you'll not need to face such hassles if you become a data scientist. Reason number six, bleak prospects for career growth. This point follows on from the previous one. Any profession in which you are doing the same thing day in and day out for years on end will naturally present you with very few opportunities for career growth. And the profession of a programmer is no different. Many programmers simply refuse to admit this unpleasant and unfortunate truth. Programming careers race toward a peak, and then there's an inevitable decline. The other thing is, as the years roll by, it gets more and more difficult to find and keep a position as a programmer. Many programmers, sadly, get caught flat-footed and unprepared. I'm sure you don't want to become a programmer and face this sad reality down the line. But if you become a data scientist, you'll probably not face similar issues down the line. You'll find the real reason for this when you look closely at the role of a data scientist. As a data scientist, you'll constantly approve at the five core skills, problem formulation ability, analytical ability, technical ability, ability to synthesize, and ability to influence. And your prospects for career growth are indeed bright. Now, considering this backdrop, don't you think it'll be easy for a data scientist to advance in their career? Yes, of course. Career progression is quick and inevitable because right from day one, a data scientist increases their ability to make a direct impact at the product, 
project, domain, and organization levels. Reason number seven, you'll not learn diverse skills. Very true. Don't expect to learn diverse skills if you become a programmer. Your job role simply entails coding, coding, and more coding. While it's true that you'll learn new languages all the time, you'll definitely not learn many new skills. For several years, an entry-level programmer's job responsibilities are quite limited. They write and test codes for software and mobile apps, and they develop and deploy computer applications. They also fix bugs in the existing codes. But if you become a data scientist, your job responsibilities are varied right from the start. A data scientist is essentially a crossover between multiple disciplines. In simple terms, a data scientist is a multi-talented expert whose expertise lies in seeing the big picture. You could think of a data scientist as a programmer, statistician, and excellent data storyteller, all rolled into one. You'll be learning predictive modeling, data visualization, analytics, coding, communication, and more on the job every single day. You'll also gain knowledge in the fields of statistics and probability and contextual understanding. These diverse skills will help you excel in your field. Reason number eight, don't expect regular pay raises. If you want to follow your passion and not a lucrative paycheck, then become a programmer. But if regular pay raises are important to you, then don't become a programmer. The main problem in the world of software development is one of the constant erosion of skill value. Unless you're employed at an organization that deals mostly with slow to change technologies, there's every chance that your skill set will lose value every single day. In the programming universe, the state of the art is undergoing rapid change. The skills that are most sought after this year will be outdated next year. As a result, you simply cannot expect a regular pay hike when you are sitting at the same desk and doing the same work from one project to the next. You'll need to constantly upgrade your skills just to maintain your initial value. So the only way you can boost your paycheck is by expanding your skill set tremendously and also move to another organization or earn an internal promotion in your current organization. But if you become a data scientist, you can not only expect regular pay raises, you can also get them. Reason number nine, scheduling new projects and completing them in time is always a challenge. Programming is one thing that never gets over. This is the reason completing a project in time can be a real challenge. There will be bugs inevitably, and they will need to be fixed. Even the best written code can have them. The time frame for programming is at best vague, and uncertainty is a part of the whole process. Also, the need to make high-quality products and deliver software that clients want weighs constantly on the team members. It's not a great feeling if you have to work in this high-stress, competitive atmosphere all the time. But if you become a data scientist, you don't need to worry when some software fails to execute properly. You also don't need to worry about lost software development time. And you don't need to suffer endless frustration as new programmers do. Reason number 10. If you don't love programming, don't become a programmer. Or for that matter, if you don't love becoming a data scientist after knowing all these facts, don't become one. Well, this reminds me of Mark Twain's well-known quote. Find a job you enjoy doing, and you'll never have to work a day in your life. If you love spending 12-plus hours a day writing codes, learning about coding, becoming a better programmer, and talking about programming, then you should become a programmer. But if you wouldn't enjoy writing codes for 12 hours a day, every single day of the week, for weeks on end, then don't become a programmer. As a programmer, you need to understand that your clients want their developer to care about their business websites, mobile apps, and desktop apps they build. The problem is, too many programmers spend most of their time hating their jobs. They simply go through the motions. So, if talking about the next project doesn't excite you, you shouldn't become a programmer. You'll probably be better off if you become a data scientist. If you're interested in learning more about becoming a data scientist, then be sure to check out our courses at the first link in the description. Subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss more videos helping you to start your data science and AI career and more. Check out this playlist of our data science and machine learning lessons and see you in the next video. Take care.